Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Football Uncensored podcast with me, Rob Curtin, and John Sitton. A little bit of a break for a few weeks, international break, working break. We've both got things to do. We've been a bit busy, but here we are. Apologies all, but even John, how are you? Yeah, good. Not too bad, Rob. Yeah, been a bit of a hectic time, as you say, but um, yeah, hopefully we can get back into the swing of things and uh, memory don't betray me. I, I, I'll be honest, like looking at it over the thing, there's... There was a few uh, highlights with the Premier League, and it, like you say, the international break, which I think we're, we're going to talk about first briefly. And then maybe one of my old clubs, Chelsea. <laughs> dear, oh dear. They may come up, John. They, they normally do in in, uh, in our little chats. But yeah, we'll start We'll start with England, as you say, international break. Um, well, I'm going to start with the word underwhelming. Both results... Yeah, I watched one game. I watched the Malta game. I didn't yeah. see the Macedonia game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got my thoughts on the squad selection, the team selection, but I'll hand over to you. You're the, pe- you're the person that everyone wants to listen to. Oh, did you see both games or the highlights at least? I'll be honest, Rob, we could do with a few more listening um, because uh, everything we've predicted on here since the start of it, uh, stuff that I've said before, uh, when someone else has hosted it, it's all come true and it's all coming true and it's all been proved right. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. I thought it was totally underwhelming. Um, I think it's over, overly optimistic to say, like they have in the press. I mean, someone said 50 50, but then he's quoted some stuff. I'm, I'm beginning to think maybe they follow me on Twitter. They've quoted stuff that I've said on Twitter or that I've said on here. Um, I'm looking at it and uh, I think it's like I say. Very overly optimistic that that that, um, that we we've got to think positive and we've got to go for it. And I think now's now's as good a time as any. But uh, and obviously they're going to take into account the record at the previous two tournaments. But I just think like it's not as cut as cut and dried as people think it is. When you can't break down an amateur the likes of um, Malta and with all due respect and um, Macedonia. Mm. And there's a lot of ingredients. There's a lot of ingredients. One of one of them was actually highlighted uh, with regards to people. So it was a p- particular journalist going on about the the squad and who's in, who might be in, and who's definitely you know got slim, lot of slim, uh, or no chance. Uh, what I predicted. One of the things I predicted is you've got to get a grip early in terms of um, squad selection team selection, qualifying for tournaments. Um, the old cliche gets trotted out. There are no easy games in international football. I countered that by saying if there were no easy games in international football, we wouldn't have qualified for the last six to eight tournaments. Um, yeah. So you can't, have, you can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake, uh, your cake and eat it. Then what I cited was, and it's all evolving now because people's ages are getting mentioned. Here's a thing, right? Uh, very quickly, which I mentioned before. I said, we've got to be very, very careful as a coach and a manager. What you've got to do is you've got to learn from yesterday. Think about yesterday. Prepare for today, right? And have one eye on tomorrow. Okay? That's how I worked. That's how I operated. Uh, Non-league level, league level, youth level. Um, And I said, we're going to have a problem. And I still maintain we will have a problem with regards to everybody, like certain clubs have, at the likes of Spurs, which I said that uh, certain members of their squad were shot three, four, five years ago. Okay. Um, and then yeah, I think there was, it was the centre-backs you mentioned, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a sea change, uh, more or less more or less all at once, right? With England, you've got Maguire, I believe, uh, 30 years of age. Uh, you've got Carl Walker. Um, who's gone from strength to strength and probably can play till he's 35, 36 quite comfortably. Magnificent athlete. I'll hold my hands up, prove me wrong. Um, I thought that City gave... I said I said to someone, in, in a friend of mine in media, in my opinion, um, he lacks this, he lacks this, he lacks this, he lacks this. I named about four or five things. Uh, they've paid 50 million for Forrest Gump. Um, which is, you know, it's, it's disrespectful and disparaging in, in, in a way, but I was trying to be humorous with the with the criticism and I thought he just sort of basically run up and down that outside trench. And I think what, what's been bought into his game at city is like I said, punching into the front man, uh, maybe doing a crossover 
um, with a midfield player with regards to getting it back, punching it inside, and then following the pass to clear the space for if you're playing three centre backs to come, someone come and play on the outside, or the winger to drop short if you've cleared the space to get it to feet, etc., uh, etc. Et right? I ain't going to go over it all here, but there's like three, four, five, six different things you can coach just uh, passing a movement in that segment of the pitch alone, right? Um, so suffice to say, he's become so good, so comfortable. Uh, and he's such a good athlete, he could probably play until he's 35, 36. But I think he's around 31, 32 now. Maguire, 30. Pickford, he seems to so. he seems to pick himself. Um, I mean, it's not good with... Uh, uh, I did say that my preference would be Pope. He's having a good, fairly decent season at Newcastle. I think he looks like he's going to be the main threat purely and simply because Ramsdale's not getting any club football. Apart from at the weekend, because he the other guys he couldn't play against his uh, uh, parent club. Then you've got uh, yeah. Stones, who they're talking about starting as centre back, who's had a few injuries of late. He's twenty nine. Uh, left back, we don't know whether we're coming or going. Uh, having a shit shave or air cut because you've got a right back playing left back, as in Trippier, because Chilwell seems to be injury prone. Um, who's the other one? Shaw. He's been in and out with injuries, right? And we can't decide on what our best midfield is. And here's the thing. I think Harry is round about the same age as Maguire. And we've got no one coming through of that calibre, right? The only one of that calibre in terms of finishing is an Irishman at Brighton, right? In, 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 uh, in, oh, apart from obviously the obvious big ones at City and Liverpool. You understand yeah, what I'm sure. trying to say? But, you know, like that sort of size in terms of finding it, passing it in the corners and being a decent finisher. So... I think we could be struggling a little bit more than people think we are. I don't know. Uh, I still don't think the formation's right. Um, Squad-wise, okay. Um, He's taken the opportunity to experiment. He's taken the opportunity to give people a run out um, against perceived weaker opposition, and we struggled. Mm -hmm. And he's taken a chance to rest a few, like Jude Bellingham, who I think, we're going to be massively, massively dependent on. Um, and there's others who I haven't mentioned, and it got a mention in uh, this particular article, which is something we said maybe three or four podcasts ago, Jordan Henderson. I said he's off the pace. Those were the exact words used in the article uh, yep. last week, which we said about probably two months ago, uh, mm-hmm. whenever, the, whenever the last uh in the yeah. break was he's gone to non-competitive football. They've signed big names on big wages to to give the finger, which reminds me of the old North American soccer league when people were going out there, your your bests and your marshes and etc. Uh, and other players and players were sent on loan from the club I was at Chelsea to play through the summer and earn a few quid. Um, others just went out there for a payday, and you can't blame them. But it's nowhere near as intense and as competitive, and it was the right time for Liverpool as well to let him go um it's nowhere near uh, as intense and as competitive as the as the premier league it's never going to yeah. be uh, so he's off the pace so he's coming at the end of his string so it, you know it begs the question um who do you pick i mean probably rice is nailed on and uh, bellingham is obviously nailed on i think i said a few internationals ago to, uh, again to the same person uh, a friend and acquaintance in in media i would make him captain now um, you know, purely from the, the different the different points of view, different aspects. But I would I would have made him captain there and then, Bellingham. Um, I think he's England captain in waiting. Um, we'll see, unless someone else is, comes in and their opinion's different. Uh, the same way as I suspect Eddie Howe is manager in waiting. Um, I, that's the way I feel about uh, about Jude Bellingham. Other than that, I think we've got to sort out the formation because look. Just to sum up, Rob, very quickly, right? Yep. When someone concedes the ball and defends deep and then decide to gun press maybe halfway in the middle third, right? So you've got your defensive third, your middle third, right, which is round about the halfway line and they went bump, bump, bump and locked on. And then when when it got passed, right, there's a couple of three things here. England didn't move the ball quickly enough, right, and they were too overindulgent, right? And the way to beat a team that defends deep, one is uh, very basic, which is using the airspace over the top. One is to find a way through with dribbling, uh, dribbling and a bit of trickery and then maybe a threaded pass, which we weren't capable of. And the other is width 
and crosses into the box, which we didn't seem capable of because they nullified all those areas quite comfortably. So um, I'm cautiously oh. pessimistic. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. The game I the I'm gonna say I watched the multi game. I was I was abroad. I watched the multi game, and the three yeah. aspects you've just listed there, we uh, we we comfortably failed on all three, and it was it, it was almost it was almost embarrassing to watch at times. You had you know yeah. you had players running into each other and running yeah. into each other's space, and yeah. You don't expect that at club level, let alone international level. No, I think the thing that highlighted it for me over the weekend was the Arsenal goal. Uh, Odegaard, he, he, he's basically gone on a bit of a mazy and uh, they've doubled up on him. He's realised he's going up the blind alley or up the no-through route. And then you've got basically around the ball, 2v2, um, with a covering player behind the Brentford player. And he's gone to sack it. There you go, you have it. So And then he's gone bump, 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 and then whipped it in with his left foot nice and early. Um, and Averts has come up at the back post, uh, made the ground up and uh, made contact and got the goal. Um, we, we, we didn't seem to be able to do that. And, and what I, when I look at England as well, with regards to club football, I don't see, you know, obviously you've got to be careful, very careful, supposedly at that level, um, when the ball changes hands, what they call this transition with these expressions now. Uh, but when the ball changes hands or or, we, or you lose possession, you've got to be careful about getting caught on the counter. Um, but what I notice is, I mean, I might be wrong. Well, I don't know if my memory's playing tricks, but um, again, when I looked at that goal yesterday, there was like three Arsenal players converging on the back post and it, it was it in with a bit of whip. Um, took quite a lot of players out of the game and that adverts made contact. I don't see England players flooding the box. Maybe no. yeah, they should. You understand? So it might be um it might be Kane and Foden or it might be Foden and Saka or it might be you know what I mean there are two two half points. Anyway, um there's no there's no presence in there. I think that's what I'm trying to say. There's no presence in there. And like I say, the only the only three with a team defends deep, you can be patient, but they'll, 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 you, what you do is you you gotta reverse it. As a coach, you've got to reverse it, right? Um, what are the ingredients of decent defending? A lot of the time, it's about delaying, making play predictable, uh, buying time. Um, and then obviously, if it does come in, it, it, into the box, or you get a chance to go and win, win it and nail someone, um, assessing the, 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 the flight or the, pass, the, the line of the ball, put a name on it, uh, make a decision, put a name on it, go and deal with it. Um, so bearing in mind that a couple of key things are uh, you don't have to steam in and win tackles. All you've got to do is threaten the ball. And we and, and England just seem to they share it on um, and, and they maintain possession, which you would expect against Malta and Macedonia. But I just thought we were too overindulgent and we didn't move it quickly enough. Then and you're playing strained in the opposition's hands with regards to um, delaying and making play predictable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If someone's playing across you all night, you, you say, yeah, that's, that's all right. That's, they're not doing any damage. Of course, and, and then you go and threaten the ball like, we, like they did. Um, and, and maybe someone pass it. So it might be Maguire. Um, the one who I've seen who I do like is the um, the other kid at centre-back who played. The black kid. I thought he was fantastic because he restricted uh, himself to two touches. Alice, um, uh, Gooey, Gooey. Yeah, yeah. Excuse pronunciation. Ex-Chelsea, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought his decision making was really good because he shared it on quickly. And at international level, really, or any level, if you're trying to teach the game appropriately, that's what should be happening. And I thought we were, you know, we were too overindulgent. And uh, like I say, if you if you if you you don't have to go and nail someone, you don't have to go and win fifty fifth or go and win a tackle. If it's wide, you've got to get get the block on. You've got to get within blocking distance for sure. You've got to give say someone go on a race you and then get under them and maybe win the tackle, right? But sometimes it's just a case of going to threaten the ball, which is those two two teams, that's what they did. And they made England play sideways, and they stand for that all night long. And they and they did both sit. I mean, obviously, we only got a draw in Macedonia, but we ultimately beat Malta. And like you say, both teams, both opposition teams, ultimately did that. And yeah. as we've said, they, we struggled. We've qualified, obviously, but... You know that's what we do. We call it. You know we qualify, don't we? And with regards to with regards to um, we experimented the, the quote. We experimented a little. We experimented a little bit. I'd love to know what they think they got out of it. 
You know what I mean? I understand, oh. though. I understand 100%. It's a good opportunity to do that. And I understand 100%. I probably um, would have been thinking along similar lines. You know, you've got certain people who uh, played too much football, would have played a lot of football, like Bellingham, um, and a, a, in a very um, sort of intense environment in uh, in, in Spain. Um, carried the team a few times for England. Uh, so, yeah, it's fair enough that you, you give them a rest, you give them a breather. Um, and people like um, Grealish, I'm, I'm not even sure if they didn't. I'm not even sure he got on for one of them or, or both of them. But anyway, I mean that's the other way. That's the other one I say about getting the ball wide and, and whipping crosses into the box. That's one of the other ways of beating a team like that is taking players out of the game with dribbling ability. And mm. um, I didn't see too much there. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, what else did we get out of it? Maybe, maybe it's to cross names off. Rather than tick, put ticks against names, maybe it's a case of uh, having a look to, to confirm your your doubts and crossing names off. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's not. That's a. That's probably a, yeah, a good alternative way to look at it, and probably not a way that a lot of journos or, or pundits would. Maybe it's a. Yeah. Yeah. Not a trial, like you say, not a trial to see who's in. A trial yeah, to they see. do. I mean, the difference is, Rob, they get paid for watching it and giving an opinion. I'm just glad I got home for the highlights because I would hate to have seen the low lights. You know what I mean? Trust me, it was dire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was dire live. Um, just a little, just a little quick sort of link to England and a little bit of Chelsea moving on from the um, the qualification. Obviously, I think the draws this week to see we get in the in the finals of the Euros. Yeah. Um, a, a big bit of news and a very sad bit of news come through yesterday. Terry Venables, yeah, obviously England, Chelsea, yeah. Um, he started at Chelsea. That yeah, the one that docked his, docked his diamonds. He fell out with the dock. Uh, I think the dock thought he was too opinionated. Uh, I know how that felt. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, but um, unbelievable. Career, everyone you talk to, fantastic coach, great innovator. Um, I got quite a few regrets that might have been one of them, but then again, I was at a bigger club uh, at the time. Um, when uh, I was coming up to the summer of '76, and people were vying for who you know who wanted to sign you apprentice, um, after the Arsenal, and then uh, getting the Osgood Schlatter, and then Arsenal wanting me back. I've done a miscalculation. I actually rattled the names off him. And I thought, hold on, why did I say nine? It's 10. I, I, I had the choice of 10 clubs with regards to um, signing apprentice, as it was known then. But basically, it was cheap labour. But um, wanting to try and make your way in professional football. And uh, he was working under Malcolm Hall. I'll never forget Malcolm Ellison said said to me and my dad, um, after he'd already spoke to me, dad, about offering me an inducement. And there's quite a few in my age group and a uh, year above um, and a couple of years above who did really well out of it and I could have been part of it. He um, he said, I've got, I got uh, a, a really good young up and coming coach who's going to help me with it all, with the uh, their uh, like their blueprint, their idea for the club. I think the chairman was a Mr. Raymond Bloy who he'd managed to convince that they should try and get all the best kids in London and, and across the country. A lot of the Welsh lads, Peter Nicholas, Ian Walsh, um, it was Vin Vinny Hilaire, Vincent, Vincent, um, fantastic player, Hilaire, yeah. great lad as well. Uh, Jerry Murphy, who'd already left Chelsea, started at Chelsea with me. Um, who else was there? Billy Gilbert, uh, Kenny Sanson had already, he'd already, he was already established. He'd been an in England international and, um, he was firmly entrenched over there. Who else would there have been? Was Jerry Francis there? I'm guessing massively, or was he? Or am I guessing the wrong era? No, wrong Jerry era. Francis. No, the wrong era. No, this was Palace '75, '76 season. And uh, he said, "I got, I got, I got this uh, really fantastic young up and coming coach who's going to help me with it. His name's Terry Venables." <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Sliding doors, John. Eh? Sliding doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that's life. That's life. But all all I know is the the towels, the towels. I can't say them on here. The, uh, the couple of the stories of when he was at Chelsea uh, were absolutely legendary. They were they were unbe unbelievable, uh, unbelievably funny, and um, maybe in, on a couple of occasions a bit risque um, when they went on tour to Bermuda. 
uh, Kenshaletta Regaldus uh, in 76 when we were doing the training ground, getting the pitches ready in the summer during the off-season. And we were, they said, well, if you come in, we give you a bit of expenses. So the whole squad, the youth team squad that was being inducted, there were 16 of us. And Ken was helping us and we were doing the duties around the thing. He was regaling us of Taos, of uh, Venice, because they used to come in together on the tube as kids. Um, I think, I'm not sure, I think Ken had to go all the way to the end of the line up Minster. Or it might have been vice versa anyway. One of them, yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure, um, I'm pretty sure Venice got off first. Um, they, used to, they used to travel in every day together and he, every rush hour he used to embarrass him. <laughs> That's the type of guy he was. Yeah, just unbelievable. The, the, the cogs always turning. Um, and just really sorry. I never, even if it, it was as a kid, never got the chance to work under him. Um, Lord Hudson, he used to speak highly of him. The likes of Terry and uh, George Graham, they used to be asked to stay behind and take the evening coaching sessions. Um, and Tommy Dockett, he confessed the main reason was it so so he knew where they was. <laughs> he, he, used to get, he used to get the pros to come back and Huddy was a kid coming through. Yeah, so that's how far back it all goes. Just wow. an amazing character, amazing man. No one's got a bad word to say about him. Amazing coach. No one, no one's got a bad word to say about his coaching ability. And they reckon a, a ter terrific man management man manager, um, whatever that means. Um, whereby even last night, there's someone said he used to take a personal interest in you. And I think it's to, you know, it's the case of him going up and trying to build a rapport with players, which he was fantastic at, for everything, you and my personality. And um, just just a sad loss, isn't it? It's just it's sad when anyone dies, but when it's someone in, in the community, I have won myself a bereavement, and I'm going to uh, hope to go to his funeral on the thing. If not, I'll have to send, definitely without a doubt, one of my ex-teammates at Chelsea, Jimmy Clare. Um, we lost touch, and I didn't know he was ill, and then recovered, then was taken ill again. And uh, we lost him last week. So it's just sad. It's just sad. Uh, all you can do is... Yeah, but for the grace of God. Indeed, mate, indeed. I mean, yeah. you you say Jimmy Clare there, he was a, uh, I believe he was, correct me if I'm wrong, he was a teammate from when you joined young at Chelsea and yeah. through uh, when you were apprentice or schoolboy, whatever it was, yeah. apologies, I'm getting the terms wrong, but when, when you joined as a youngster, he was there and all the way through and um, for the majority, if not all of your time at Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, he, he joined just after. He joined just after I signed a schoolboy. Then they signed him in a run up to be an apprentice. They signed him apprentice, and then we come through all the things together. South East Counties Division One football combination, and then I had had a thing. Um, um, left the club. He, I think he he broke into the squad. I think he was sub away at Bolton, which is which is uh, ironic because that was my first four away game. It was Bolton when I made my debut. Yeah, Frank Worthington knocked me out. <laughs> I was going to say, was that when Frank Worthington? Yeah, yeah. Right, on the right on the temple. Yeah, about 13 and a half stone through through the through the point of his elbow. I was backpedalling and then crunch. Yeah, have that. Yeah, because I'd because I, I I had the audacity to have a nibble at him on the halfway line. Yeah, yeah, tough guy. When you had your back to him. Yeah, I suppose he could say the same. <laughs> I'm sure if he was if he was here today, John, I'm sure he'd. Uh... I'm sure he'd speak highly yeah, of you. Yeah. I'm sure he would. Well, I'll tell you one thing that never happened in that game. He never he never juggled it and then touched it over me head and volleyed it in the net. Oh, what a goal that was. You remember that? Ipswich. Yeah, well, no. I, sorry, I might not look at it, but I... I, no, I too, too, young young. See, yeah. too young to see the goal live, but... It was shame it was for many, years. It was shame for years and years. Many years times. And years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, many times. What a goal. Yeah. And, and I have watched Frank Worthington in the flesh because he did a year at uh, Saints, I believe it was about 1984. Yeah. So, yeah, saw him in a, saw him in a Saints kit. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've done it about two or three times. I've, I've bumped into him. Uh, we played for someone in the testimonial at Gillingham. He was come down as a guest. He probably got paid exes and whatever, and they got a gift and maybe some readies. And he's, uh, all right, son. <laughs> I, I, I just went, oh, at you, son. Yeah. But then when we played the game, um, I was pinging balls into him because I was playing right back that night and he's just like good service great service like Ozzy did when he come back yeah I was talking about him actually 
Uh, he, yeah, he was on. He was prevalent on uh, social media this week as well, yeah. wasn't he? Was it his birthday or the anniversary of his death? I'm not. I yeah. couldn't. I wouldn't want to commit to it. I wouldn't want to get it wrong. But it's, it, either way, he was. Uh, he was fairly present on social media this week. A few people were yeah. um, obviously wish him, you know, reminiscing and what yeah. a great player, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He was I my was dad's. He was my dad's favourite player. Yeah, Southampton. Yeah, yeah. Well, even before he even before he joined Saints, when he joined Saints, but that was made up. Yeah. He had the lot. He, he loved Aussie before that. He, he had the lot. Aussie had the lot. And, and uh, unfortunately, he broke his leg, which uh, took away um, something. I didn't see what. Um, you asked me, he should have played in the 1970 World Cup. Uh, but he never, even though he was in the squad. Uh, and I was lucky enough to train and play with him when he came back to Chelsea the second time round. I remember at Ivory, we were playing a football combination game again. I was fizzing it into him. He's like, sit. So I went, I went keep it coming like that, son. Keep it coming like that. Yeah. And then Adi brought me back down to earth uh, when we were talking about stuff like that. And uh, Hudson said, you've got to realise, John, he said that to everyone. <laughs> that was just yeah. bringing me back down to earth. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, if that's the level they want to work at. Oh you know, Lord Hudson, I saw I did see you on uh social media this week. I know you're obviously a good presence on social media. I mean with the um the historic Chelsea stuff. I saw a Panini sticker of you and a few others, and mm. you were listed as a midfielder. I was nineteen. Yeah. I was nineteen. I don't know what listed me as a midfielder. I was best I played I played a few games for Gillingham in midfield, but I was uh, predominantly a centre back. Like I fell, fell between the two stalls, unfortunately. You know, I weren't, I weren't um, rapid, quick, and I weren't a six foot three only monster. So six foot one was no good to you. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is. I remember it. The thing um, that's at me and Ronnie, me and Ronnie, me and Ronnie Harris. So um, turned out to be quite. He was pointy. next to you in the album, actually. Yeah, yeah. Not the bad company. Also, he was, he, he was next to you. Not bad company. No Not bad company. Yeah, I think to be fair, I think that's what um, whoever posted. It, I think that's what the I think that's what they tagged you as. Uh, there you go. I, I can't. I forget. I forget the other players. One one of them might have been Aussie. I don't know, but it yeah. was uh, they. I think whoever tagged you used the words "not bad company sits." And Ronnie Harris was definitely one. And obviously, there was a a couple of other fairly highly rated players as well. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. they were maybe they were talking about the other two sits, and they were yeah, you never referring know. to you. Yeah, you never know. It's all about fate and luck, keeping your head down, which I've never been able to do. Keep what you say to a minimum. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. Run the bollocks off me, sir, without doing anything else. And uh, that's it. You end up parting company. What makes me laugh, I don't know if we're going to do another segment, what makes me laugh is the quality of the defending we'll I saw try. over the weekend at Chelsea. I would never, I, I sat them on sitting there with him, I said, I would never have got away with that. I would never have got away with that. Uh, and yet they, And yet they seem to. And uh, they, they they earn the equivalent of a mini lottery win every month, and they're defending like that. Embarrassing. Nothing short of embarrassing. Embarrassing. Uh, we'll come to that. I think we will try and do another segment. I know we said we're only going to try and do a bit, a little bit short on England, but we we sort of did England, and we've moved on to other threads, which hopefully is a good, is uh, good for everyone to listen to. Um, you've just reminded me of one of the other three players. It was in your little window of Panini stickers when you said run the bollocks off. And it was uh, one of your favourite managers, Sir Sir Jeff. Oh, Sir only, Jeff. Yeah. The only surviving member of the only surviving member of the '66 team now, but he was one of the other three in the little snapshot of the Panini pictures that you were with. Yeah, yeah, seventy nine, eighty season. Listen, bottom line is he, he he was he was right to do what he did. You know what I mean? And uh, I handled it wrongly. Uh, him and Bobby Gold. Uh, and it's first time I've admitted this on on anything like this. But if I was manager, I probably would have done the same. He was right to do what he did to try and eradicate the uh, drinking culture. Um, the only mistake you made was I wasn't part of it. But I gave him an excuse and he took it. I gave him a reason to off me and and uh, he took it. But I'd have done the same as him because uh, it was rotten to the core. The club was rotten to the core. Well, there you go. We have a. Semi, a semi-exclusive, a semi-exclusive. Yeah, 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 and you can't beat a semi. Well, you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We still got, we still got a couple of minutes. We still got a couple of minutes left on it on this episode. So let's 
let's move, let's move on from semis, uh, whether they're semi finals or semi whatevers. But um, just I think um, we want to uh, put the Premier League and Chelsea because we're going to unashamedly talk about Chelsea in the next segment. I think. Okay. Um, just to sort of conclude this one with uh, Mr. Venables, for me personally, um, I was chatting to my mum yesterday about England managers, and she said, "Oh, he's he was my favourite." My mum said. Uh, right. He was a favourite ever England manager. It was the and best. I said, I it said toss up between him and Sir Bobby. Hmm. They both, but the Italian ninety, which was Bobby, and Euro ninety six, which was Terry Venables, are yeah. the two tournaments that stick most in my head as yeah. a yeah, as a but person. If you if you look at it in terms of staying ahead of the pack, uh, or at the very least, run being one of the front runners in terms of innovation, um, I think Venice wins it wins it hands down. He was very much, uh, uh, Robson was very, very much an FA man. Even back even back to when I was thinking of, uh, going to Lillishaw and places like that. He was very much uh, a part of all that, already a part of that, and part of the old lot with regards to the um, the videos they made, etc. He was already very much a, uh, an FA man and very um, appropriate. Venables is, um, is like... It would be one of us made good. You understand? Mm-hmm. And it's like I said before. Um, I've said it on other podcasts or on, on other interviews. So I, I didn't. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it how the way he was treated. Other than the fact that they cited his uh, off the field uh, business dealings, which is nothing to do with the FA. And the bottom line is, I don't see how he was going to bring anything into disrepute when the two managers down the line uh, totally bought the job into disrepute. Uh, the title, no. and then the one after him, he he uh, pulled the FA's pants down, smacked their ass, threatened to resign just before a tournament unless he uh, allegedly, unless he uh, his son was allowed to negotiate a new contract for him, and they got rumped to the tune of eighteen million. You know what I mean? So it makes you wonder, really, the decision makers at the time whether they roll out of bed on the wrong side or someone says saying, and like I've said probably the most persecuted uh, regional accent in the country is the Cockney one when it comes to football and um, faces in high places. You get what I mean? Mm. And I think, I think um, every, everything that could have been said in terms of plaudits, I, 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 you know, there's nothing that I can really add other than the fact that he, he, he was one of those very few in this country ahead of his time. Yeah, that's, Good words, John. Good words to finish this episode on. We've, we've got seconds left. So thank you, everyone, for watching this episode and indulging us having a little bit of a chat. We're going to try and do another one. We'll talk about the Premier League and probably about Chelsea. So thank you once again. Please tune into the next one and we'll see you soon. Yep. Cheers, everyone. See you in a bit, hopefully. <laughs>